begin with we are trying to prove the theorem that we defined for a function f on a domain d in r n to r to be uniformly continuous if for every epsilon bigger than 0 there exists a delta bigger than 0 such that whenever two points are close by a distance uh, delta that implies the distance between f x and f y is less than <coughs> epsilon. And we were uh, trying to prove uh, theorem namely f as before d can in R into R, the following are equivalent. Saying that F is uniformly continuous, is equivalent to saying whenever we have two sequences a n b n in the domain d such that they come close to each other. So, this goes to 0 then this implies the images also come closer. No, goes to 0. So, uh, we had proved one way, but anyway let us recall. So, suppose f is uniformly continuous. So, let f. So, we are trying to prove 1 implies 2. So, let f be uniformly continuous. Let us take sequences a n and b n. Say so that the distance between a n and b n goes to 0. So, we have to show that the image sequences uh, also have the same property as of course n goes to infinity. So, this is what we want to so, right. Now, to show that uh, the this goes to 0, what one is to show that given epsilon bigger than 0, there is a stage after which everything comes less than epsilon. So, let be given. We want to find a stage and not such that after that stage this distance between f of a n and f of b n will be less than epsilon right but we know that will be less than epsilon whenever by uniform continuity if a n and b n are close and that happens because this goes to zero so let us choose so choose so choose some delta bigger than 0 such that no uh, ok. So, uh, such that x minus y less than delta implies f x minus f y is less than epsilon right that is possible because the function is uniformly continuous that is given to us. So, whenever x and y are close by a distance delta that will imply that f x and f y are close by distance epsilon right. So, if a n and b n come close to delta then corresponding will be less than epsilon and that uh, is ok. So, find 
and not such that mod of a n minus mod of b n is less than delta for every n bigger than n naught. That is possible because we are given that because mod of a n minus b n goes to 0. So, given any delta we can find a stage after which they are small. right? So, implies a n b n is less than delta. So, by the equation star. So, star implies f of a n minus f of b n is less than epsilon for a b n bigger than n naught. Right? So, that is what we wanted to show that if a n and b n are closed then f of a n and b n are closed. So, that is hence two holds. So, what we have shown is f is uniformly continuous then this implies this property. Two. Conversely, let us show two implies. So, conversely, to show two implies one. That means whenever uh, two sequences a n and b n are close, we want to show that f of a n and f of b n are also close. That is given to me. Second, we want to show f is uniformly continuous, right? So, suppose one does not hold. So, what is the meaning of saying that f is not uniformly continuous? That means, uniform continuity meant for every epsilon something happens, right? Not uniformly continuous impel hold, then there exists some epsilon bigger than 0 such that. For existence, we had there exists a delta, right? So, such that for every delta bigger than 0, we can find a pair of points, there exists two points x delta y delta, such that the distance between x delta and y delta is less than delta, but the distance between f x delta and f y delta is bigger than epsilon. Right? That is the meaning of saying f is not uniformly continuous. Something similar we had done when we were trying to prove that continuity right? implies a n converges to a implies f of a n. So, same proof basically negation is important. So, we want a sequence now. So, in particular for delta equal to 1 over n, there exists x n y n in the domain such that x n minus y n is less than 1 over n. We are specializing delta to be equal to 1 over n, but f of x n f of y n is bigger than or equal to but that contradicts the given hypothesis 2, which says whenever sequences are. So, this contradicts right. So, that is what was given to us 2 implies 1 and what was 2? 2 was whenever a sequence is closed, images must be closed. So, we found a sequence x and y n, they are closed. So, this goes to 0 but f of x n minus y n the distance always remains bigger than epsilon. So, that is a contradiction. So, hence 2 implies 1. So, um, uniform continuity can also be expressed as in terms of sequences namely whenever two sequences are closed in the domain the image sequences must be also closed. So, that is in terms of sequences. Okay. So, let us look at some applications of this or some consequences of this. So, that see normally you prove so two uh, statements are equivalent not just because we want to prove mathematically something nice, but also in some situations one is useful 
one criteria is useful in some other situations some other criteria is useful but both are equivalent so for example uh, saying that a sequence is convergent if and only if it is cauchy the two statements are equivalent a sequence is convergent is equivalent to saying a sequence is cauchy right sometimes if you want the limit then you have to use the first one that sequence is convergent by finding the limit of it but if you do just want to prove that a sequence is convergent you are not in really interested in knowing what is the limit then proving cauchyness is good enough elements are coming close to each other so for example here let us look at some example okay so here is let us look at f of x is equal to 1 over x for every x not equal to 0 So look at the function f of x is equal to one over x, right? So uh, if you uh, look at the graph of this function geometrically, as you come closer to zero, your graph blows up, right? Is increasing, at is increasing much faster. So it looks like uh, so at well one the value is one. So here it goes like this. right it's coming closer and closer to zero but if you see that between 0 and 1 it's becoming large very fast right so same notion of closeness near 1 will not work near 0 you might require much bigger kind of thing but if you want to look at sequences so let us look at let us look at uh, let uh, xn be equal to 1 over n and yn be equal to 1 over n plus 1 what is the difference between the two so what is that so there is 1 over n into and that goes to 0 right so in the domain i have got two sequences one is 1 over n other is this and what happens to f of xn what is the difference between these two so that is n okay absolute value that is equal to n plus 1 minus n absolute value that is equal to 1 so i got a pair of sequences in the domain x n y n so that the distance between them goes to zero but the distance between the image does not go to zero so that that is one way of saying hence f of x equal to 1 over x is not uniformly continuous okay uh, so that is one example of uh, how sequences are useful in proving these kind of things let us look at some more examples we had already shown that f of x is equal to say for example that x square we showed is not for x belonging to r is not uniformly continuous but if i restrict the domain equal to say x square between say anything between uh, Say one to three, x belonging to is uniformly continuous. That we proved. That example we showed that if you restrict the domain, then it becomes by using absolute delta uh, definition, right? In fact, so here is a theorem. Let f b be from d contained in r n to r b such that d is uh, compact uh, that means equivalently closed and bounded and f is continuous then 
that is the kind of thing happening here in f of x is equal to x square this is continuous and the domain is a close bounded interval 1 to 3 right and we are saying whenever such a thing happens f is uniformly continuous. and f becomes uniformly continuous. Okay, so, let us uh, see why is that. So, let us use the sequence criteria here. Okay. So, let x n y n in d such that The dis, uh, okay, the in R n, so I will just write the absolute values, meaning that in R n it is a norm. Okay. If you like, you can just write norm of x n minus y n goes to 0. Everywhere, whenever we are looking R n, right, instead of absolute value, you can think of absolute value of a vector as the norm or whatever it is. Right. Is it okay? Is there a matter of notation for a vector in R n? the norm, I sometimes call it as absolute value also of that vector, it is same as sigma i i square, right, square root that thing. So, that is the notion of distance in R n. Okay. Uh, so, this goes to 0 to show, so what we have to show, f of x n minus f of y n, we are in the real line, so that goes to 0, so that is to be shown, right. Okay. So, now uh, look at x n. So, must note, see, uh, okay. so let us uh, write and then probably explain why I am doing that. So, x n in D, D compact, what does that imply? It should have a convergent subsequence implies there exists x n k a subsequence of x n such that x n k converges to something let us call it as uh, uh, converges to x in D. Okay. Now, x n k converges, so consider y n k, the corresponding choice of the subsequence y n k. So, what do we know? We know x n k and y n k are coming closer. goes to 0, right, because x n y n goes to 0, the subsequence is corresponding will also have the same property. And x n k is converging to x, so where does y n k converge? So, implies y n k converges to x. Okay. So, what does that imply? Okay. So, uh, okay. what, what is given to us? F is continuous. So, F continuous, so implies F of x n k converges to F of x and F of y n k also converges to yes f of x, right, because continuity. So, that implies that both are converging to f of x same limit. So, f of x n k minus f of y n k goes to 0.
So, what we are showing? Uh, are we showing what we wanted? We wanted that f of x n should and y n should converge, the difference should become. What we have shown is, there is a subsequence for which that is happening. right? That is not good enough. That is not, we have only shown for a subsequence. We want to show it for the original sequence. right? So, let us, uh, uh, so this uh, direct kind of argument does not work. Okay. So, let us uh, go to, uh, we want to avoid that going to a particular subsequence. So, let us assume that this statement is not true. Okay. Assume, so let us assume that, so not good enough. So, consider, so, so we need to modify the proof. So, consider assumption suppose minus f of y n does not go to 0. Right, but we still have the fact that x and y n are going to zero. That is already given to us anyway. This doesn't go to zero, so implies what? And something a sequence of numbers, right? This sequence of numbers that doesn't go to zero. That means what? Negation of the statement, right, implies there exists some epsilon bigger than zero and subsequence x n k, y n k, such that mod of x n k minus f of y n k remains bigger than or equal to epsilon for every k. Right? Is that okay? Negation of the statement that does not go to 0 should, should remain away from 0 for at least a subsequence. Now, I can work with the subsequence. So, now consider x n k. in D, which is compact, right? D compact will imply what? Will we let it up in the same trap? x n k has okay. we will get a subsequence which is uh, convergent. So, that will be convergent uh, I think we are ending up at the same blockade in our proof. thinking a sequence proof should be good enough, but you know uh, the problem uh, will be reaching at the same place because we get a subsequence for which this contradiction uh, will be there, right. But uh, for every y n k, no that should be okay probably, no? for every k, yeah I think maybe okay, let us just write and see whether that is good enough. If not, we will change the argument. D compact implies uh, there, is, there exists, for this there is a subsequence. So, same argument as before, but for the subsequence. There exists uh, a matter of writing, there exists a subsequence x k n is already a subsequence, what would you write to write? So, let us write x k n l 
such that x n uh, x n k l right not k n but I just is subsequence of a subsequence x n k l x n k l converges to some x in D okay so let us write so implies uh, that is good enough I think yeah is greater than that is okay so implies what implies if I look at the corresponding subsequence y n k l that also converges to x because x n k l minus x y n k l that distance goes to 0. Are you uh, that subsequence is subsequence I probably will explain again what I am saying. So, let us negation means this thing that is okay saying that this does not converge to 0 that means there is at least one subsequence where the distance remains bigger. Now, look at this sequence x and k which is actually a subsequence of the given x n, but look at that as a sequence that should have a convergent subsequence because d is compact as before. So, it is a matter of writing x n k l that means it is a subsequence of x n k. So, in turn also a subsequence of x n subsequence of a subsequence that is a subsequence of the original also. So, let us so that converges to x by compactness, but the corresponding y subsequence because x n and y n are coming closer. So, y n k also will converge to x because they are coming closer right. So, that implies what? So, that implies by continuity f continuous that f of x n k l converges to f x also f of y n k l also converges to f of x. So, that should imply what? There are two sequences which are converging to same limit f of x. So, sequences must come close to each other now right. So, implies mod of x n k l minus uh, f of y n k l that goes to 0. The same proof as before, but only for subsequences. But now look at this statement, call it 2 and call that earlier statement as 1. Uh, where is that? This statement as 1. So, look at for the original subsequence x and k, the distance remains bigger than or equal to epsilon, right, for every element. So, for the subsequence also of this sequence, the distance will remain bigger than epsilon, right. So, x n k and y n k are subsequences whose distance should remain bigger than or equal to epsilon by 1, but by second it says that should go to 0. So, that is a contradiction. So, this contradicts one and what was that one? So, just remind you again because of our assumption the distance between the corresponding elements of the subsequence must always remain bigger than epsilon, but here we have gotten two subsequences of the given same sequence. So, either the distance goes to 0. So, that is a contradiction. So, hence, so that assumption must be wrong and that means, so hence mod x n minus y n going to, uh, so that, so uh, what are the, what we have proved? we assumed it is not, uh, so suppose it is not true then that must happen. Okay? So, that proves, uh, so we were proving 2 implies 1, right? hence 2 implies 1 is ok. Oh no, yeah, so continue, uh, no what is 2 implies 1? I am sorry, we are not proving 2 implies 1, we are proving if a function is continuous on a compact domain, then it is uniformly continuous. So, hence, oh that was earlier one, hence f is, f is uniformly. Okay, let me just, uh, because I change things too much, so let me re revise this. You are given f is a function on d, r n to r, d is compact, f is continuous. You want to prove that 
f is uniformly continuous. So, we have to prove whenever two sequences x and y in are such that the distance goes to 0, the corresponding distance between the image must go to 0. Right? So, the basic idea is if this does not happen, I will have a sequence x n k y n k in the domain right? Okay, where the distance of x n k and y n k goes to 0, but this distance does not go to 0, it remains bigger than epsilon that is a negation. So, that is a negation we wrote right to show. So, this was no, this was uh, not the correct one here. So, suppose this does not go to 0. So, given epsilon bigger than 0 there is ok. So, this is what is the assumption. So, if this does not go to 0 then for any there is a epsilon so that the subsequence so the distance remains bigger. If it does not go to 0 there is at least one subsequence for which the distance should be the key main bigger than 0 that is bigger than epsilon. Now, look at this x and k in the domain, x and k and y and k are two sequences in the domain. Look at x and k, right? it should have a convergent subsequence. So, x and k converges to some x for some subsequence. Corresponding subsequence of y and k right, should also converge to x because x and k and y and k are close to each other that is given to me. So, I have got a subsequence of x and k, I have got a subsequence of y and k both converging to same point x. By continuity, the image of this subsequence will also converge to same point f of x, but that means what? If two sequences are converging to same point, then they should come close to each other. So, that implies for the given sequence, I have got a subsequence y and k l and so on such that their distance goes to 0. So, that is what we got here, but that cannot happen because corresponding terms of the original sequence always remain bigger than epsilon. right? So, this is a contradiction. So, that proves that every uh, continuous function on a compact set is uniformly continuous. So, as a consequence uh, one could have said that uh, in that example this is uniformly continuous but we proved it uh, by using definition alone. Okay. Right. 